So in the literature, there are three popular ways of doing this. So one I've already sort of indicated to you that here is your um, sort of wire. I'm just going to split it by a small gap delta and I'm going to connect this to a generator which puts some voltage VA. So this is at plus VA by 2 you can say and minus VA by 2. Okay, and this distance is delta. So that's one way. Take a take your RF generator and plug it into the middle of this wire. So that's going to generate a VA. Now remember, this is not DC VA, right? This is going to be a, a voltage that is fluctuating at the frequency you want to radiate at, right? So over here, do I know EI? Inside this segment, yes, right? It's just what is it? Yeah, that's it. VA by delta. And what is EI over here? So I'm chopping it. So you're going to chop this up into segments, right? When you do M1. So what is EI over here? There is no voltage source there, it's zero. Right? Because I didn't connect the voltage generator across that segment. It's going to be it's going to generate this incident field only across the voltage is only across one part of the wire, not everywhere else. So EI over here is 0 and EI over here is 0. Hmm? So I mean you have your conductor like this. Okay. So don't think that I have split the conductor, it's one conductor and in the middle I have connected one RF generator, both the leads to it, plus and minus. Yeah, you take two points and across those two points you connect this and so the, that's why I have shown the leads like this. One is connecting here, the other is connecting over here, right, across some gap delta. Hmm? There is no break in the curve, yeah. On the upper segments. Yeah, well, that is again a, should we say that's a statics approximation? Well, this is the sort of a, this is a model, remember, it's not going to, it's, it's not exact, but it's a model that gives you close enough results over here, okay. Uh, the length, so, so say that again, hmm, then? Then it is not equipotential. If yeah, then you have to take uh, recourse to your transmission line theory. But the point is that there is due to this elect induced voltage over here. I mean, due to this applied voltage over here, there is now going to be a current that is going to flow in the wire, right? And that wire, uh, current induced in the wire is going to produce another scattered field, which is what we've been calculating. And together they are zero in the conductor. Okay. So this is your delta gap which is the easiest one to uh, apply because it's just you can see the values VA by delta in the gap and 0 everywhere else. So this column vector that you have, this is a column vector at all different ZMs, right? So that ZM which is the center of this segment you put in this value, all other places you put 0. That's it, very simple to apply, okay? The second thing is what is called this magnetic frill which uh, it's like a ground plane and a coaxial cable sitting on top of it, like a monopole. And then what happens by image theory is, I replace the ground by the reflection of this. But there is one thing, I mean we won't go into the detail, but as a result of doing this, I am left with a small magnetic current over here. Okay, so this, this thing is called a magnetic frill, right, so this is ground and this is coax cable. And this magnetic frill, there are some equations for it which give you some EIZ over the entire length, okay. We won't be using this, 
in in this uh, discussion but i mean there's enough literature on it that you can look up magnetic field and finally the third thing so these are both for a transmitting antenna for a receiving antenna also there is an induced uh, volt i mean induced uh, there's an incident wave that will produce an equivalent of a source so <coughs> here is my antenna over here and there is some plane wave falling on it over here so in that case what will i write e i z equal to minus why minus incident field what is it's just the value of the electric field no v by d what is d now ah uh, you're overthinking it this plane wave is falling over the entire thing right so there is a field that is that is already there at every point of this conductor and its value is going to just be equal to the value of the value of the field at that point with one small modification remember we are talking about electric field and i have drawn these arrows correspond to ha huh, these arrows correspond to the wave vector which way will the electric field be in general e will be like this right and h will be into the board right so this this is going to be the z component of it because remember we are enforcing this along we started by saying along the surface or on the interior and along the z axis only we are only looking at the z component so this became z dot this uh, e not e to the minus j k not z cos theta that's your plane wave without the omega t term uh yeah i mean if you have different uh, polarization yeah if you have different polarization this dot product will be different it is what is the value of z dot e not whatever it is is, is going to appear over here and this is going to be non zero at every point inside this at every of your zms is going to be the case e not is the amplitude of this incident wave that is coming to you whatever it's given to you in the problem that uh, in, yeah you just have to take the z component of it and in your column vector over here this guy put in the values because that is the extra incident extra electric field that is coming over here in addition to the scattered field due to induced current those are those are the two fields which are present in the conductor which should together sum to zero okay so this was for the transmission case and this is for the receiving case